If you're anything like me, you get inspired all the time. Whether you're out with some friends or alone in a coffee shop, you have little ideas kind of floating in your head. Maybe you see something and you instantly think like, that would make a great shape or a design for a light, or you see a piece of furniture and you instantly start kind of redesigning it in your head. For me, I'm doing that all the time. And it can be a lot of fun, but it's also really distracting. When I started this channel, I really wanted to be able to do not only just tips and tricks as an interior designer and share that expertise, but also give you a transparent and real-time peek into the journey of taking those creative ideas and inspirations and actually turning them into real-life products that real people get to use and experience and enjoy. And so I want today to give you a dreamer's guide to getting it done. Okay. Once all the ideas start coming in, I like to start with just some concept sketching. So I like sketching out kind of just my initial idea, you know, something's been floating around in my head and I'm like, I have to quickly sketch it out. Now, this process either goes two ways for me. One, I have instant relief and I feel like, yes, I've documented my idea into some paper and that I'm sure that I'm not going to forget it. The other way that this could go can be incredibly frustrating. I've got this idea in my head and I can't quite get it right on the sketch. Like I sketch and I try, but my skills don't quite make it to where I can like really show the concept and then I can get like a little frustrated that I can't quite get it. But let me tell you that in my experience that this initial sketching is usually what it takes at least to remember the concept. So if you need to start with stick figures and basic drawings. Don't be afraid to start there. Sometimes I start there too. So after I've got the initial sketches kind of down on paper, I'll kind of move into doing a couple different iterations. This might mean that I just sketch some more and keep developing it. And in some cases I might need to take it to the computer and build some 3D models. But once I've got like a good kind of handle on the design, I might show it to a trusted friend or a colleague or someone who I know will be able to give me some good feedback and you know just kind of either confirm the, the direction I'm going or kind of steer me in a new direction. Once I feel good about where my sketches are, I don't like to stay in the sketching mode too long before moving into building something physically with like some paper, scissors, tape, whatever I have on hand. And even though, of course, it's not gonna be built of paper, scissors, and tape, and all of that in the end result, but it's so important to me and my process to be able to start to see the forms kind of come to life and feel them and work with them. For me, in this process, this is where I spark exponentially more design ideas once I start building in, you know, like a physical material and physical form. I think if you say only in sketching and only on the computer, there's so much you miss out on in the physical molding and shaping of your pieces. Now that you've done the initial kind of quick model with some paper or tape or whatever you've got around, it's time to move into a more developed rapid prototype. Again, this is gonna be in materials that you can find, but it's a little bit more solidified in the design to spend more time on it and really kind of refine it. I like to do several iterations in what I call like a rapid prototyping so I can test out different sizes and dimensions and different scale and then see how I feel about that. Now, just like the last step, this usually sparks more ideas and more concepts. And so I have to really work on staying focused on what I'm doing and sometimes I do, but other times the ideas that spark from this process, well, I'll just go with my gut and I'll run down that road and <laughs> pursue those other design options that, or design concepts that come from this process. If I decide to not chase these other ideas that come up and stay on track, I at least try to do a quick sketch so that I don't forget the idea. Okay, so once I'm done with the prototypes and I'm comfortable with the, the form and the scale and the sizing, then it's time to rebuild in 3D. So I'll take it back into the computer, put all of my dimensions that I've come up with in the prototyping into the computer and kind of solidify it there. 
The advantage to designing in 3D in the computer is that you can scale and make different changes to the same model in a matter of minutes, something that would take hours to do in physical form. Now, I say that, but I wanna remind you that it's very important to work in the physical form. I feel like when I try to skip making it in the physical and just do it all in the computer, my ideas lack a vitality and they just, they're just missing something. So after I have put it in 3D in the computer and I'm happy with that, it usually prompts one more attempt at a physical prototype. Now this is the prototype that I will spend the most time on because you know it's my last one, it's the final one. I'll work hard to make sure I have the materials. Even if it's not the exact material, I'll make it look as close to, as possible and even maybe look at higher end lighting sources, more realistic lighting sources, because I really, this is kind of my last go at like proving it. And you know, at this point, this is when I am super confident in this design and I'm sure it's going to work. And so it's really fun to finally see it come into come to life in like a form that I'm excited to share. After completing the final prototype, I'll move into working on the specifications. This essentially is creating a package of drawings and images, and I'll highlight you know, how I think it'll be installed, the lamping options, the different finishes, so that I have everything together for a manufacturer to be able to look at it and give pricing and timeline and, and even feasibility. If you thought that the build and refine and build and refine process was the end of the back and forth, think again. Because once you send your designs to manufacturing, there's gonna be a lot of back and forth even in that process. They figure out how they're gonna make it and test that out and then also make sure that it's what you want. So there's a good bit of back and forth, but that is a really exciting part of the process. Once that's approved, we move into designing packaging and thinking about the shipping logistics and even distribution. So the last time I gave you an update, I was about 20% into a 12-piece collection of designing lights that I, a goal I had set for myself. But before I could even finish that, I got a new project that came in. It was a full service, it's a full service, full design project, a very large project that has swept me in and taken all of my time. But you might be saying, but Kelly, you were, you were determined and focused to get your products done and to get those products out there. And I am, and I still am, the exciting part about this new project is that they are giving us like full trust to develop and design custom lighting fixtures and installations for this project. So to me, it's like this big door swung open and now we have the opportunity to achieve one of our core goals, which is essentially to design products, manufacture them and have them be in spaces where people can enjoy them for a long time. So this is just, beyond exciting. It's kind of all of everything coming together and all of our strengths and ideas and skills kind of coming together into this one big project. So I'm so excited to be kind of launching on that. So season one of Creating Kokobo is coming to an end and I'm a little sad about it, but we will continue to share updates on the YouTube channel and other social platforms. So I'll keep you updated. I know that this journey can seem like never ending and ever changing. And I know that for me, you know, when I'm looking at a difficult road or a difficult journey, it is so much easier when I know I'm not alone. And so that's why I want to keep sharing and I want to keep hearing your feedback and hearing your stories. So keep designing, keep creating and keep dreaming. <laughs>